Jesus, you never fail, Father, you never fail, 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 Jesus, you never fail, Father, you never fail, you never fail, you never fail. You never fail. You never fail. You never fail. Jesus, you never fail. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. One as if you were. Praise the Lord. Naomba to Kaya Katka Wepo Amungu. Let's get seated in the presence of the Lord. Last Sunday we were talking about understanding. Did you understand what we said last Sunday? We said that understanding comes with the hearing the voice of God. Tulisema kuelewa kunakuja kwa mtu kusikia neno la Mungu. We said that there is a difference between listening and hearing. Na tukasema kuna tofauti kati ya kusikiliza na kusikia. Uweza kusoma neno la Mungu. Unaweza ukasikiliza ujumbe wa neno. Lakini pale tu utakaposikia katika roho. Linafanyika kuwa neno lililoshushwa wakati huo kutoka kwa Mungu kwa ajili yako. Maana ya neno hilo rema ni neno lililotamkwa. When the Holy Spirit speaks, Roho Mtakatifu anapozungumza. That's when you hear. Hapo ndipo unaposikia. Through a voice of a, a sermon, kupitia sauti ya ujumbe, or a preacher can be speak, uh, preaching, au mubiri anaweza kuwa anahubiri. Then through the voice of the speaker, alafu kupitia sauti ya mnenaji, you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Unasikia sauti ya Roho Mtakatifu. Then you understand what the scripture says. Alafu unaelewa kile ambacho lile neno linasema. And what was mystery becomes reality. Na kile ambacho kilikuwa ni siri kinafanyika kuwa uhalisi. What was hidden kilichofichika becomes the revelation for you. Kinakuwa mafunuo kwa ajili yako. When it is revealed, na kinapokuwa kimefunuliwa, it is now your portion. Sasa ni sehemu yako. It is for you. Ni kwa ajili yako. And for your children. Na kwa ajili ya watoto wako. It gives you ability. Inakupa uwezo. Hata kutekeleza au kutimiza mapenzi ya Mungu. Kwa hiyo tunahitaji kusikia. Kwa maneno mengine tunahitaji kuelewa. Kwa sababu pasipo kuelewa bado tuko gizani. Hatujui nini cha kufanya. Biblia inasema Roho ya mwanadamu ni nuru ya Mungu. Na si tunajua ya kuwa Mungu ni nuru. Na tunajua ya kuwa neno ni nuru. Kwa hiyo nuru ya neno la Mungu inapokuja na kugusana na nuru iliyo katika roho yako kuna kuwa na mlipuko kuna kuwa na kutungwa mimba na kitakachozaliwa au kutokea baada ya hapo ni udhihirisho tulipokuwa tukishirishana pamoja katika kikundi cha nyumba kwa nyumba walipokuja kunitembelea Alafu timu akasema Jinsi nilivyoelewa huo mlipuko ni kama vile kutungwa mimba kwenye roho yako. Na nikasema ndio neno hilo hilo halisi. You can go with your husband many times. Unaweza ukaenda na mume wako mara nyingi. But it's not every day that you conceive. Lakini sio kila mara mnatunga mimba. There is conception. Kuna kule kutunga mimba. What when what you hear becomes a seed. Yaani pale ambapo kile unachokisikia kinafanyika kuwa mbegu. When there is a seed inside your spirit. Hapana na mbegu ndani ya roho yako. Expect a manifestation one day. Tarajia madhihirisho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. To take things from the hidden place 
to the reality of revelation na tukasema kwetu sisi kutoa vitu katika kule kulikofichika kuvileta katika uhalisi tunahitaji kunena kwa lugha we need the intervention of the holy ghost tunahitaji roho mtakatifu aingilie kati because when we speak in tongues kwa sababu tunaponena kwa lugha our mind is not involved nia yetu au akili zetu hazihusiki hapo the spirit and the spirit of god are working together ni roho yetu na roho ya Mungu zinafanya kazi pamoja your spirit with the spirit of god in you roho yako na roho wa Mungu aliye ndani yako na roho mtakatifu the holy spirit is that is interceding for you na roho mtakatifu anakuombea and that's when he start downloading in your spirit na ndipo hapo anapoanza kuteremsha vitu kwenye roho yako na uhalisi a revelation mafunuo a direction mwelekeo a specific way to upewa do neno mahususi kwa ajili ya kufanya vitu hallelujah hallelujah how many people know that this word of god is true the word of god but it's sometimes general it's general watu wangapi wanafahamu kwamba mara nyingine neno la Mungu linapokuja linakuja kwa ujumla For instance if you want to have a direction a specific direction of your life kwa mfano kama unataka kupata mwelekeo mahususi wa maisha yako or maybe if you need to choose a job among five au pengine unahitaji kufanya uchaguzi kati ya kazi tano uchague moja or a lady wants to choose a partner among many au binti anataka kuchagua mwenzi kati ya vijana wengi these are specific directions haya ni maelekezo mahususi you not find it in the bible uwezi kuyapata kwenye biblia but as you keep on praying lakini unapoendelea kuomba the holy spirit will give you direction roho mtakatifu atakupa maelekezo he will give you details that will direct your life atakupa undani wa mambo ambayo yataele kesa maisha yako and sometimes the holy spirit will speak through the word na mara nyingine roho mtakatifu atanena kupitia neno he will give you an example of a specific case in the bible atakupa mfano wa tukio lililotokea mahususi katika biblia are you not seeing the bible where the face of somebody showing that this is your partner lakini uwezi kuona kwenye biblia inaonesha kwamba uso wa fulani huyo ndio mwenzi wako I now know that everything is not in the Bible. Sasa najua ya kwamba sio kila kitu kiko kwenye Biblia. As the Bible confirms it saying, kwa sababu Biblia inathibitisha ikisema, If everything was written in the book, kama kila kitu kingeandikwa, If everything was written in the Bible, kama kila kitu kingeandikwa kwenye Biblia, we won't be able to hold it. Tusingeweza hata kuibeba. Meaning that, ikimaanisha kuwa, there are so many things that are not in the Bible. Yako mengi ambayo hayakuandikwa. So how do we know that this is the this is God speaking? Sasa tujuaje kuwa huyu ni Mungu anazungumza? Even though everything is not written, hata ingawa sio kila kitu kimeandikwa, but everything that comes from the Lord. Lakini kila kitu kitokacho kwa Bwana will be in alignment with the word kitaendana na neno it will not come contrary to the word kita kuja kupingana na neno can you hear me nanisikia can you hear me nanisikia there is no way god will show you the face of somebody in the bible amna mahali ambapo mungu atakuonyesha uso wa fulani kwenye biblia even the bible says that jesus performed so many miracles that they were not able to write it hata biblia inasema ya kwamba yesu alitenda miujiza mingi sana kiasi kwamba hawakuweza kuiandika yote so tell your neighbor Understanding is the key. Sasa mwambie jirani yako uelewa ndio ufunguo. You need to understand who you are. Unahitaji kuelewa wewe ni nani. You need to understand your gifts. Unahitaji kuelewa vipawa ulivyonavyo. You need to understand specific direction that Una... concerns your life. Unahitaji kuelewa mwelekeo mahususi unaohusiana na maisha yako. Even when you are going through suffering. Hata unapopitia mateso. You have advices left and right. Una ushauri kushoto na kulia. But as long as you don't understand. Lakini kwa kadri ya kuwa uelewi moving left and right adui ataendelea kwenda kushoto na kulia as a matter of fact na ukweli the bible talks about this woman with the issue of blood biblia inazungumza kuhusu mwanamke huyu aliyekuwa akitokwa na damu because we started with her in mark 5 sasa tulianza naye katika kitabu cha marko sura ya 5 do you know that the bible says je ulijua ya kuwa biblia inasema that this woman ya kuwa mwanamke huyu suffered aliteseka she went through suffering alipitia mateso she suffered a lot aliteseka sana by the way the bible says she suffered many things biblia inasema ya kwamba aliteseka katika mambo mengi mno have you ever seen that it is written she suffered many things je uliona ya kwamba aliteseka katika mengi mno No one knows all those many things. Hakuna mtu anayejua hayo mengi aliyoteseka nayo. But she suffered many things. Lakini yalikuwa ni mengi aliyomtesa. Through the hands of physicians. Kupitia mikono ya matabibu. 
if we are in the African context kama tungekuwa katika muktadha wa Kiafrika leo the bible says she suffered many things Biblia inasema aliteseka mengi mno katika mikono ya wengi kwenye mikono ya madaktari wengi including witches maybe pamoja na wachawi pengine au waganga wa kienyeji one was asking money kila mtu alikuwa anasema bana nipe fedha somebody told her labda mtu alimwambia you know this kind of sickness unajua aina hii ya ugonjwa haiendane na dawa za wazungu you cannot be healed through this medicine from europe Europeans but I am a physician ambaye ni daktari using you know african stuff anatumia mambo mambo ya kiafrika you are using this wazungu things it will not work wewe kama unatumia hivi vitu vya wazungu haifanyi kazi how much she gives she gives anaambiwa hii hapa anatoa jamani 12 years miaka kumi na miwili ya mateso not only with physicians sio tu na madaktabibu but with bad advices lakini pia alipewa ushauri mbaya bad advices ushauri mbaya wrong interpretations akapata tafsiri zisizo sawa people talking about her watu wakimzungumzia she was rich alikuwa tajiri now she became poor sasa akawa masikini because all the money was gone kwa sababu fedha yote imeenda all the money fedha yote 12 years without working miaka 12 bila kufanya kazi the money did not go only for the physicians pesa haikwenda tu kwa matabibu but the money left her lakini pesa ilimwacha because kwa sababu she was not able to work hakuweza kufanya kazi she was not able to work hakuweza kufanya kazi because of that affliction kwa sababu ya hayo mateso aliyokuwa akiyapitia severe pain alikuwa katika mwivu makali when the bible calls it affliction it means she suffered a lot that she was not even able to go to work biblia inapoita mateso ni kwamba aliteseka sana kiasi kwamba hakuweza hata kwenda kazini 12 years miaka 12 of lack of understanding ya kukosa uelewa 12 years miaka 12 of affliction ya mateso but one day lakini siku moja she heard akasikia i do believe mimi naamini this was not the first time she heard she 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 was preached the word hii haikuwa mara ya kwanza neno lilihubiriwa kwake maybe she was despising labda alikuwa akidharau She was despising the word. She was despising the preaching. Another hour maubiri. But one day, lakini siku moja, he said I better listen to this. Akasema acha nisikilize hili. She heard kasikia about Jesus Christ. Kuhusu Yesu Kristo. When she heard, aliposikia, it hit the light within her spirit. Ikagusa nuru iliyo ndani ya roho yake. And the spirit spoke in her. Na roho akazungumza ndani yake. There was there is no place where they said that she learned or she read that if you touch the garment of Jesus Christ. Hamna sehemu inayosema ya kwamba alisoma au alijifunza kwamba sikiliza ukigusa tu pindo la vazi la Yesu Kristo utaponywa. But it was a pure revelation after hearing from the Holy Ghost. Lakini hayo yalikuwa ni mafunuo ya moja kwa moja baada ya kusikia sauti. So the Holy Spirit can breathe in you something that is very specific just for you. Kwa hiyo Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kupumzia kitu ambacho ni mahususi kwa ajili yako ndani yako. For some other people it would have become like a, a wrong doctrine. Kwa wengine ingekuwa kama ni mafundisho potofu. But because she heard lakini kwa sababu alisikia it produced something in her ikazaa kitu ndani yake it produced a new conviction in her ikazaa ushawishi mpya ndani yake Jesus is life ya kuwa Yesu ni uzimi uhai let me just go and touch hebu acha nikaguse uhai today i'm going to encourage you leo naenda kukutia moyo with this word na neno hili actually is the word of encouragement ni neno la kutia moyo for anyone who is bleeding in one area of his life yote ambaye anavuja damu katika eneo moja la maisha yake the fact of bleeding ukweli kwamba unavuja we all know that blood is life sisi sote tujue ya kwamba damu ni uhai blood is life damu ni uhai when you are bleeding unapo Vuja damu. It means that somehow somehow life is going out of you. Inamaanisha kwa jinsi fulani kuna uhai unaotoka ndani yako. Peace is going out of you. Amani inatoka ndani yako. Joy is going out of you. Furaha inakutoka. Faith is going down. Imani inapungua. Because of what you are going through. Kwa sababu ya kile unachokipitia. 
Your reputation is going down. Hata hadhi yako inateremka. How do you react to that? Unaitikia vipi kwenye hilo? Let me tell you. Ngoja nikwambie. What I like with God. Kile ambacho nakipenda kuhusu Mungu. Is that no matter how down you go. Kwamba haijalishi unaenda chini kiasi You will go down. Utaenda chini. You will go down. Utaenda chini. If you are with the enemy. Kama uko na adui. If you are not with the Lord. Kama hauko na Bwana. You go down and basi. That's it. Utaenda huko chini ndio mwisho wako. But I want to talk to somebody here. Lakini nataka nizungumze na mtu hapa. No matter how down you are going. Haijalishi unaenda chini kiasi gani with the lord kama uko na bwana you're going down kwenda kwako chini you end up by rising again utaishia kwa wewe kuinuka tena hallelujah hallelujah you not go down completely forever utaenda mpaka milele huko chini even if you are going through night time hata kama unapitia nyakati za usiku as long as you are with god kwa kuwa tu uko na mungu the day the understanding will hit your spirit siku ufahamu utakapogusa roho yako you now go with courage sasa utaenda na ujasiri you go with knowledge utaenda na maarifa you go with wisdom kaenda na hekima you not experience despair hutapitia hali ya kukatishwa tamaa you know, kwa sababu unajua that, baada ya hapo nitaanza kuinuka juu haleluya 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 you are going down kwenda kwako chini you are going down kwenda kwako chini it will be stopped by your understanding kutasimamishwa au kuzuiwa na kuelewa kwako mara utakapopata uelewa hata bado kama unapitia shida unajua tu it will not end up there haitaishia huko it will not end up there haitaishia huko the way there is they going down jinsi ambavyo kuna kwenda chini the same way they will be they are rising ndivyo vivyo hivyo kuna kwenda juu receive it in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu receive it in the name of jesus pokea katika jina la yesu today we continue with understanding leo tunaelewa na tunaendelea na sehemu ya pili ya somo letu la uelewa and i want you to write all the scriptures that we'll be using na ningependa uandike maandiko yote ambayo tutakwenda kuyatumia starting with mark 5 as i said ukianza na mark 5 kama nilivyosema write all the scriptures on the screen andika maandiko yote pale kwenye runinga and we going through all those scriptures alafu tutapitia hayo maandiko yote praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe praise the lord bwana yesu asifiwe praise the living god bwana mungu ali hai asifiwe that's why i love the lord ndio maana nampenda bwana the bible says biblia inasema if god is for us kama mungu yuko upande wetu if god is for us kama mungu yuko upande wetu who can be against us nani awezaye kuwa kinyume nasi tell your neighbor mwambie jirani yako if god is for us ikiwa mungu yuko upande wetu if god is for us ikiwa mungu yuko upande wetu and indeed he is with us na hakika yu nasi who can be against us nani awezaye kuwa kinyume nasi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like it in Kiswahili. Mimi naipenda kwa Kiswahili. Ikiwa Bwana akiwa upande wetu, ni nani atakaye kuwa juu yetu? Nani awezaye kuwa juu yetu? Hallelujah. Amen. The English version says who will be against us? Nani anayeweza kuwa kinyume nasi? Lakini in the Swahili version who will be against us? Nani anayeweza kuwa juu yetu? So the second key of understanding Kwa ufunguo wa pili wa uelewa in everything you are going through katika kila unachokipitia is to make sure ni kuhakikisha even in this trial hata katika jaribu hili I am with him bado niko pamoja naye and he is for me naye ni kwa ajili yangu if not kama sio hivyo the going down will end up there kule kwenda chini kutaishia chini kabisa god forbid mungu na aipushilie mbali time to stand with the lord ni wakati wa kusimama na bwana because he is our example kwa sababu yeye ni mfano wetu he was god alikuwa mungu he was god alikuwa mungu and because of saving you and me na kwa sababu ya kutuokoa mimi na wewe he accepted to suffer for you and me akakubali kuteseka kwa ajili yako na mimi when i think of the suffering of jesus christ ninapoya tafakari mateso ya yesu kristo i am amazed by his compassion and love ninashangazwa na huruma aliyokuwa nayo na upendo this woman mwanamke huyu she suffered yes ndio aliteseka she suffered for her affliction aliteseka na mateso aliyokuwa akiyapitia sickness in her body na ugonjwa aliyokuwa nao katika mwili wake very painful ilikuwa ni maumivu makali but jesus christ lakini yesu kristo the suffering of jesus christ mateso ya yesu kristo 
it was not for him haikuwa kwa ajili yake it was for me and you ilikuwa ni kwa ajili yako wewe na mimi hallelujah hallelujah by this i say this kwa hili ninasema hivi associate your suffering with christ hebu jihusishe wewe mwenyewe na kristo meaning what inamaanisha nini don't accept to suffer because of the enemy usikubali kuteseka kwa sababu ya adui but just know that even in suffering lakini jua tu ya kuwa hata katika mateso Jesus suffered for me Yesu tayari aliteseka kwa ajili yangu and indeed na hakika if i am a child of god kama mimi ni mtoto wa Mungu according to romans 8 kufuatana na warumi 8 7 Saba. that if we are children the spirit of god testifies that we are children of god kwamba roho ya bwana naye anashuhudia pamoja na roho zetu ya kuwa sisi tu wana wa mungu and if we are children of god na kama sisi tu wana wa mungu we are heirs of god basi tu warithi meaning that wa mungu we are heirs of god tuwarithi na mungu coherence with christ tukiwa warithi pamoja na kristo only ikiwa tu we suffer with him tutateseka pamoja naye if we suffer with him kama ukiteseka ukiwa pamoja naye we share his suffering kama utashiriki mateso yake then bas will inherit tutarithi glorification also from him kule kutukuzwa pia kutoka kwake haleluya haleluya but if you are suffering because of the enemy lakini kama unateseka kwa sababu ya adui you need to check your life unahitaji kuyachunguza maisha yako repent when need be na kutubu pale pale unapohitaji kutubu if the affliction is caused by the enemy kama mateso yanasababishwa na adui it is it is requiring repentance basi kuna hitaji toba But if it's a process lakini kama ni mchakato and God is for you na Mungu yuko kwa upande wako just make sure God is with you in that pain wewe hakikisha tu ya kuwa katika yale maumivu Mungu yuko pamoja nawe that pain ajua ya kuwa yale maumivu will take you down yatakupeleka chini but because you are with Jesus lakini kwa sababu uko na Yesu you raise again with him utainuka tena pamoja naye hallelujah 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 this is the example huo ni mfano in philippians 2 wa filipi 2 Let's read the word of God. Hebu tusome neno la Mungu. We need to have the mind of Christ. Tunahitaji kuwa na nia ya Kristo. What is the mind of Christ? Nia ya Kristo ni ipi? Is to know that for a cause. Ni kujua kwamba kwa sababu you can go through a process of going down. Unaweza ukapitia mchakato wa kwenda chini. But believing God lakini ukimwamini Mungu that there will be also a rising kwamba pia kutakuwa na kuinuka let then this let this mind be in you basi iwe ni nania hiyo hiyo ambayo ilikuwamo ndani ya Kristo Yesu 5 to 7 mstari wa 5 mpaka wa 7 Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus iwe ni nania hiyo hiyo ndani yenu ambayo ilikuwamo pia ndani ya Kristo Yesu ambaye yeye mwanzo alikuwa yuna namna ya Mungu naye hakuona kule kuwa sawa na Mungu kuwa ni kitu cha kushikamana nacho bali alijifanya kuwa hana utukufu akatwaa namna ya mtumwa akawa ana mfano wa mwanadamu tutasoma na kwa Kiingereza let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men eight study one and, and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross you know when you are in a problem every, everyone become becomes like like an advisor kila mtu anafanyika kuwa mshauri wa kujitegemea kwa everyone comes with his own advice kila mtu anakuja na ushauri wake you remember the story of job right kama walivomfanyia ayub si unakumbuka but he kept quiet lakini alinyamaza kimya because kwa sababu if you follow so many advices from people ukishika na kufuata mawaidha mengi kutoka kwa watu wengi you may fail to hear the voice of god unaweza ukashindwa kuisikia sauti ya mungu you need to keep quiet unahitaji kukaa kimya until you get the understanding mpaka upate uelewa until the holy spirit speaks to you mpaka roho mtakatifu atakapozungumza na wewe the holy spirit is a person roho mtakatifu yeye ni nafsi Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. That's why I believe so much in speaking in tongues. Ndio maana mimi naamini sana katika kunena kwa lugha. To get a revelation and to know Upata how to behave. Ufunuo, kujua jinsi ya kuenenda. 
So Jesus Christ. Kwa hiyo Yesu Kristo. He started his going down. Akaanza kuteremka chini. From heaven. Kutoka mbinguni. He was God. Alikuwa Mungu. But he decided to come down. Lakini akaamua kuja hapa duniani. To become a man. Ili awe mwanadamu. It was like a demotion actually. Hiyo ilikuwa ni kama kushuka cheo. He was on the throne. Alikuwa kwenye kile cha enzi. And he was God. Na alikuwa ni Mungu. Then he comes down. Sasa anashuka chini. He becomes a man. Anafanyika mwanadamu. Yes, he was God but he was man. Alikuwa Mungu lakini alikuwa mwanadamu. Which means that he had limitation like you and me as well. Ikimaanisha ya kwamba katika hali yake ya wanadamu alikuwa na ukomo kama wako na wakwangu. But he knew. Lakini alijua. He had the understanding. Alikuwa na uelewa. That is not the devil doing it. Kwamba huyu sio shetani afanye hivi. He knew it was for a cause. Alijua ilikuwa ni kwa sababu maalum. Many people can suffer. Watu wengi wanaweza kuteseka. They can suffer for a cause. Na lazima na inaweza kuteseka kwa ajili ya sababu fulani. If you are suffering for a cause. Na kama wateseka kwa sababu fulani. Then we understand. Basi unaelewa. Then we will have faith even in that. Basi utakuwa na imani hata katika Mungu. Then we will be patient. Basi utakuwa na uvumilivu. So Jesus coming from kwa Yesu akija kutoka mbinguni. He came down. Akaja chini. He became a man. Akafanyika mwanadamu. You know how he was born. Unajua jinsi alivyozaliwa. In a dirty manger. Katika hori la ngombe chafu. You know chafu. how he lived. Unajua jinsi alivyoishi. So many suffering in between. Mateso mengi katikati. And when he became a man. Na alipokuwa mwanadamu. He decided to become a servant. Akaamua kuwa mtumishi. Not only he became a man. Na sio tu alifanyika mwanadamu. He became a servant of man. Lakini akawa mtumishi wa wanadamu. This is humility. Huu ni unyenyekevu wa hali ya juu sana. Amen. Amen. He went down. Alienda chini. But he went down with God. Lakini alienda chini akiwa na Mungu. Alijua Mungu yupo upande wake. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu He Pesifu. became now step two. he became a servant of man. Sasa hatua ya pili akafanyika kuwa mtumwa wa watu au mtumishi wa wanadamu. Though he was God. Ndao alikuwa Mungu. He was so powerful. Alikuwa healing people. Aliwaponya watu. Multiplying bread. Akizidisha mkate. Teaching wisdom. Akifundisha hekima. Then, alafu. As if it was not enough. Kama kana kwamba haitoshi. He was dead on the cross. Alikufa pale msalabani. Judged by people of this world. Akihukumiwa na wanadamu wa ulimwengu huu. He was a great judge. Ingawa alikuwa ni akili. They lied to him. Wakam They did not find a fault in him. Wakamsemea uongo hawakupata tatizo juu yake wala kosa. He died at the cross. Akafa msalabani. Which was the worst death ever. Ambaye ilikuwa ni kifo kibaya kuliko vyote. So he was keep on going down. Aliendelea kuteremka chini. Dying at the cross. Akifa msalabani. Left and right with robbers. Kushoto na kuume akiwa na wevi. Those are the suffering Jesus went through. Haya ni mateso ambayo Yesu aliyapitia. When you are going through problems unapopitia matatizo when you are going through an affliction unapopitia mateso when you are going down unapoenda chini read about jesus christ hebu soma kuhusu yesu kristo see how he behaved angalia jinsi alivyoitikia you receive courage from him utapokea ujasiri kutoka kwake you receive strength from him utapokea nguvu kutoka kwake you receive revelation utapokea ufunuo kutoka kwake he kept on going down akaendelea kushuka na from the cross na kutoka msalabani he went down deep down akaenda chini kwenye kina kuzimu huko hell can you imagine hebu tafakari hilo when you see the suffering of the cross unapoyaona mateso ya msalaba it is not bearable sio kitu ambacho kinavumilika You go down one step. You go down second step. You go down third step. You go down fourth step. Fifth step. Yatano. But because of understanding. Lakini kwa sababu ya uelewa. Because of understanding. Kwa sababu ya uelewa. There must be a limitation where you cannot keep on going down lazima kuwe na That's eneo the bottom. ambalo ndio la mwisho ambalo uwezi enda chini zaidi Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the bottom. Hapo ndio mwisho. I want to encourage you. Nataka nikutie moyo. Even that woman if it was 12 years. Hata yule mwanamke kama ilikuwa miaka 12. Joseph 13 years. Yusufu 13. So many people of God. Watu wengi wa Mungu. When they are going down. Wanapoenda chini. They were going with understanding. Walikuwa wakienda chini huko na uelewa. If you 
you are going down with understanding. Kama unaenda chini ukiwa na uelewa. Ngoja nikwambie. The time you hit the bottom. Kutafika wakati ambapo utafika chini. And that will be the time of your arising. Na huo ndio utakuwa wakati wako wa kuinuka. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. One day. Siku moja. That was over. Hiyo ikawa imeisha. For Jesus Christ. Kwa ajili ya Yesu Kristo. It will be over for you. Na kwako pia itaisha. It will be over for you. Na kwako pia itaisha. It will be over for you. Na kwako pia itafika mwisho. Jesus. Yes. Resurrected. Kakafufuka. From hell. Toka kuzima. Down there. Chini. Yes. Chini kabisa. Now he resurrected. Sasa akafufuka. That was step number 1. Hiyo ikawa sasa hatua ya kwanza. Hebu pigia makofi hiyo. Hebu clap for that. He suffered for you. Aliteseka kwa ajili yako. And me. Na mimi. He went down. Akaenda chini. So what is the Bible say in Romans 8? Sasa Biblia inasemaje katika Warumi 8? That we are here of God. Kwamba sisi tu warithi wa Mungu. And go here with Christ. Na warithi pamoja na Kristo. If only. Ikiwa tu. We also share his suffering. Tuashiriki mateso yake. We also share his glorification. Basi pia tutashiriki kutukuzwa kwake. The problem of Christians. Tatizo la wa Kristo. We just caught every day we say I'm here of God and I cohere with Christ. Tunarudia tu mimi ni mrithi wa Mungu pia ni mrithi pamoja na Kristo. And we want to jump into glorification. Alafu tunataka turuke hatua ya moja twende ile hatua ya kutukuzwa. But before we jump into glorification. Kabla hujafika tutukuzwa. We need to share also his suffering. Lazima tushiriki mateso. Ah, amen ni wale wamekuwa kiroho wengine wanaanza kujiuliza. Amen imeanza kuwa dhaifu kidogo eh ya wachache tu. Hiyo amen imejaa understanding. That amen is full of understanding. That no matter what I'm going through. Haijalishi ninachokipitia. I am also sharing the suffering of Christ. Mimi pia ninashiriki mateso ya Kristo. And if I'm sharing the suffering of Christ. Na kama ninashiriki mateso ya Kristo. Then I will share also glorification with him. Lakini basi inamaanisha nitashiriki pia kule kutukuzwa pamoja naye. In the name of Jesus. Ipokee hiyo katika jina la Yesu. So he started at the arising. Kwa hiyo akaanza ile hatua ya kwanza ya resurrection. Ya kufufuka. Hallelujah. 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 What followed? Kikafuata nini baada ya kufufuka? We are still in Philippians. Tunaona katika wa Filipi. The resurrection power. Nguvu ya ufufuo. Then what? Alafu nini? Therefore God is highly exalted him, given him the name that is above every name. Continue. Yes, the death of the cross continue. Verse 9. Ehe, mstari wa 9. Tuendelee mstari wa 9 unasemaje? After the resurrection. Baada ya ufufuo. This is what happened. Hiki ndicho kilichotokea. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. Anasema hivyo basi Mungu amemuinua mno. And given him a name which is above. Na kuumpa jina ambalo liko juu ya Majina yote. This is the problem of we Christians. Unaona hiyo ndio tatizo letu sisi wa Kristo. We want to see the glory of God. Nataka kuona utukufu wa Mungu. We want to be exalted. Nataka kuinuliwa. We want we want to have big names. Tunataka kuwa na majina makubwa. Actually having a big name is not a problem. Kuwa na jina kubwa sio shida. Even Jesus God told Abraham. Hata Mungu alimwambia Ibrahim. I will give you a name. Nitakupa jina. I will make you great. Nitakufanya kuwa mkuu. But the problem is that we want to have great names. Lakini shida ni kwamba tunataka tuwe na majina makubwa. We want to be exalted. Tunataka tuinuliwe. We want to be highly exalted. Tunataka tuinuliwe mno. We want to share that glorification. Tunataka tushiriki kule kutukuzwa. But we are not ready to go. Lakini hatuko tayari kwenda. Down in the five steps. Kwenda chini kwenye zile hatua tano. But guess what? Lakini if God has called you. Kama Mungu amekuita. If God has a plan for your life. Kama Mungu ana mpango wa maisha yako. If there is a purpose of God in your life. Kama kuna madhumuni ya Mungu maisha yako. There will be a time. Kutakuwa na wakati. When you share the suffering of Christ. Ambapo utashiriki mateso ya Kristo. When you go down mabo unaenda chini whether you like it or not unapenda usipende there will be a time of humiliation kutakuwa na wakati wa kudhalilishwa there will be a time of humiliation kutakuwa na wakati wa kudhalilishwa because jesus was humiliated kwa sababu yesu alidhalilishwa you and me will be humiliated mimi na wewe tutadhalilishwa there will be a time of disgrace kutakuwa na wakati wa kuaibishwa 
Because we share his suffering. Kwa sababu tuashiriki mateso yake. There must be a time of humiliation. Lazima kuwe na wakati wa kudhalilishwa. You are called to serve the Lord. Kama umeitwa kumtumikia Bwana. There is a purpose of God in your life. Kama kuna madhumuni ya Mungu maishani mwako. The enemy will be an instrument. Na adui atakuwa ndio chombo. He will be an instrument. Atakuwa ndio chombo. To humiliate you. Ya kukudhalilisha. They insulted him. Wakamtukana. They took him to people wakampeleka kwa watu mbalimbali alikuwa uchi watu wakawa namwambia wewe uliweza kuokoa watu uweze hata kujiokoa mwenyewe wewe ni nani looking for faults wakitafuta makosa and in a time of humiliation na katika wakati huo kudhalilisha you start wondering unaanza kujiuliza what did i do wrong nimefanya nini nimekosea nini nimekosea wapi And that's when the interpret, wrong interpretation will come. Na hapo sasa ndio tafsiri ambayo sio sahihi inakuja. Let's read in 2 Samuel. Hebu tusome katika Samueli wa 2. Let's see the example of David. Tuone mfano wa Daudi. He was a king. Alikuwa mfalme. He is a man after God's heart. Ni mtu ambaye aliupendezesha moyo wa Mungu. But there is a time God allowed humiliation. Lakini kuna wakati Mungu aliruhusu kudhalilishwa. God allowed humiliation. Mungu aliruhusu kudhalilishwa. And I wonder Why does God allow these things? Ni kwa nini Mungu anaruhusu haya mambo? If Jesus was humiliated, kama Yesu alidhalilishwa, and if we have to share his suffering, na kama inabidi tushiriki mateso yake, there will be a time that we experience humiliation. Tutakuwa na wakati na sisi tutapitia hali ya kudhalilishwa. Am I talking to someone? Ninaongea na mtu hapa. You believe, you behave, you pray But then you just see instead of una seeing amini, the glory of God you see the vema, humiliation unaomba na badala ya kuona utukufu wa Mungu unaona tu manyanyaso na madhalilisho And it is through that time of humiliation Lakini nikupitia katika wakati huo wa kudhalilisha interpretation of people Ndipo utakapoona tafsiri za watu Let's see, let's read the scripture please Hebu tusome maandiko In 2 Samuel. Samueli wa pili. I gave all the scriptures. I don't know why you are not reflecting them. Maandiko naomba mtuoneshe maandiko ya Samueli wa pili. The Bible says. Biblia inasema Samueli wa pili 16. His own son. Mstari wa 5. Biblia inasema mwanawe mwenyewe. His own son. Mwanawe mwenyewe. I mean the enemy used his own son. Yaani ni kwamba adui alimtumia mwanawe mwenyewe. To dethrone him ili kumtoa katika nafasi yake ya utawala kumpindua Do you understand that? Unaelewa hiyo? His own son mwanawe mwenyewe He was a strong man. Huyo alikuwa ni mtu mwenye nguvu. With a military force. Na ana jeshi lenye nguvu. With protocols. Ana utaratibu wote wa protokali, walinzi. He himself he knew how to fight. Yeye mwenyewe alikuwa anajua jinsi ya kupambana vita. How he fought Goliath. Kumbuka jinsi alivyopambana na Goliath. Remember how many battles he won. Kumbuka alishinda vita vingapi. He was not a weak man. Hakuwa mtu dhaifu. He was very strong. Alikuwa na nguvu sana. Even when Saul was putting him on the front line. Hata Saul alipomweka msari wa mbele. He was seeing victory in every battle. Alikuwa akiona ushindi katika kila mpambano. God taught him how to uh, to uh, how to shoot, how to make battle. Mungu alimfundisha jinsi ya kupambana, jinsi ya kupigana. Alikuwa amejaa na ushindi kushoto na kulia. He had a strong strong uh, kingship. Alikuwa na utawala wenye nguvu. He was a great king. Alikuwa ni mfalme mkuu. After God's heart. Mtu aliyopendeza moyo wa Mungu. I don't see who would there to come kwa hali kama hiyo uone nani atathubutu kuja kumpindua lakini unafikiri nini mwanawe mwenye the one who sits with him at the table yule anayeketi naye mezani the one who knows when he wakes up yule anayejua wakati anaoamka anayejua wakati amelala the one who can find him even the night clothes yule ambaye anaweza hata kumkuta amevaa mavazi ya kulala hali ambapo hakuna ulinzi Unaweza kufikiri hiyo. Mwanawe mwenyewe. He's the one who dethroned him. Ndiye aliyempindua. Security guard could not do it. Walinzi hawakuweza kufanya. The enemies of the kingdom could not make it. Adui wa ufalme hawakuweza kufanya hivyo. His own son. Mwanawe mwenyewe. He's the one who dethroned him. Ndiye aliyempindua kwenye nafasi yake uongozi na sio tu alimtoa kwenye nafasi ya uongozi. He disgraced him. Akamdhalilisha. George can you tell me how? How he disgraced him? Alivyo mdisgrace. Mm. Tu kwenye knowledge ya kawaida. 
kwenye knowledge ya kawaida kwamba umembisgrace baba yako eh baba yake yani kwa kitendo tu cha mtoto kwanza kumtoa baba kwenye nafasi hiyo manake umemwaibisha katika hali ya juu kama mama anavoelezea kwamba hilo tendo lipaswa kufanya na watu wa nje lakini damu damu nikimgeuka manake eh, kwa Kiswahili wanasema nini ukimgeuka ukimsaliti kama nikimsaliti mama yangu au baba yangu hiyo ni dharau tosha waswahili wanaita madharau hayo manake hapo amemdharau katika kiwango cha juu sana akamdithrone na akampindua yani akamtoa kwenye nafasi kwamba wewe hufai ndio manake ndio ni manake mimi sasa ngoa ni kuonyeshe vitu kama wanavyosema waswahili tumshangilie bwana kwa ajili ya pasta <laughs> Nani mwingine anaweza kutuambia sasa baada ya kumdithrone jinsi alimdisgrace? Who else can tell us the way he disgraced his father? Wasomi wa Biblia. Asumta naona ananyosha mkono. Eh? Simama uongee hiyo disgrace ilivyo ya ajabu. Eh? He slept with the concubines of his father. Unaiona hiyo? You see that? Tumshangilie Asumta hiyo point kali sana. Let us shout for Asumta. It's a powerful point. Wewe ukiona hata mtu anasogelea tu useme Pastor George ukiona mtu anamsogelea mke wako anamwangalia na jicho fulani hata kama uko pastor utamslap. If I see somebody drawing nigh to my wife even if I'm a pastor there will be fire on the mountain. Pale ndio utajua mtu ametoka rohoni amesema hapa tunaingia mwilini. That's when you see somebody say that let me put salvation aside and be me. Ben. <laughs> ukiona mtu anamsogelea Priska sio tu kwa hali fulani, kwa macho ya ajabu ajabu, kwa touches za ajabu ajabu tarehe